Hi, I'm Jay. Welcome to the Forbidden Files. In 2002, a shocking air crash happened. Over the waters of the Penghu Islands, China Airlines Flight CI-611 suddenly broke apart on the route. From Taipei to Hong Kong, killing all 225 crew and passengers on board. However, on May 30th, six days after the crash of spooky telephone, recording began spreading online, instantly generating a lot of buzzes. Some thought it was the cry of the dead, while others thought it was the last words of the victims. Today, what I would like to share is the story of the bizarre incident of China Airlines, which is the crash of China Airlines Flight CI-611. On May 30th, 2002, Mr. Zhang, a painting civil servant, hurried to his office. On this sultry summer morning, his hurry scurry had made his back sweat. So, he wanted to make a cup of herbal tea to drive the heat away. He suddenly found an unread message on his phone. This is a voicemail left at 5.21 am. He unlocked the phone and held it to his ear. However, after hearing this one minute message, what he felt was not the hot air anymore, but a chill creeping up on his back just like a twining vine. So what on earth did he hear? Let's listen to this bizarre voicemail message that seems to have come from the underworld. This one minute audio that follows contains scary content. Please be prepared and hang on to the end. Let's get started. 3, 2, 1. It was this one minute voicemail that made Mr. Zhang's hair stand on end. He suddenly remembered the air crash five days ago. Could this sound and scene be a message from the victims of China Airlines? So Mr. Zhang made a phone call immediately to Far East Stone, a mobile phone service provider. What weird was that he was told by the customer service that the phone number was not found. The only thing they know was that the message was sent to Mr. Jiang at 5.21 a.m. What kind of person would call at this time? Mr. Jiang seldom used his cell phone. No more than 10 people knew his phone number. Was it a prank from one of his friends? However, after asking his friends about it, Mr. Jiang knew it was not a prank call. He quickly recalled the air crash five days ago. He thought that this might be a distress signal from the survivors of the plane crash. To be on the safe side, he called the police at once hoping to find the victim by checking mobile phones. However, it was in vain. Due to the privacy of communication, evidence is needed to access the phone records. Since Mr. Zhang wasn't the victim or the family member of the victims, he had no right to check the records. So he just dictated and left the police. Having no alternative, Mr. Zhang sent the voice message to two trusted friends hoping to hear their opinions. He told them to keep it to themselves beyond Mr. Zhang's expectations. The audio went viral online just one week later. Did the voice really come from the victims of CI-611? If the answer is yes, why did it take 6 days after the incident to receive this voice message? To solve these mysteries, we have to go back to flight CI-611 on May 25th. Let's go to see what on earth happened on this flight. On May 25th, 2002, China Airlines flight CI-611 is about to take off. This is a four-engine Boeing 747-00 airplane. The U.S. Presidential Plane Air Force One is an improved version of this model. 225 people that just boarded the plane including 19 crew members and 206 passengers along with three children. The flight was very short on that day. 
From Taipei to Hong Kong Kai Tak Airport, the entire flight is to be 1 hour and 40 minutes. This short distance route was also one of the busiest in the world at that time. Because of the airline's lucrative profits, the route was dubbed the Golden Route. At 3.07 p.m. flight CI-611 took off at Tao Yuan International Airport. At 3.16 p.m., according to District Control Center of the Taipei 4, when the flight climbed to the Fel 350 flight level, which was at an altitude of 35,000 feet, it had the last conversation with the control center. 12 minutes later, at 3.28 p.m., the plane suddenly disappeared from radar screens. The monitoring staff reported it to the superiors. Officials dispatched over 1,000 rescue workers to rescue survivors as their top priority. However, what came into the vision were large quantities of wreckage. The debris was spread over a wide area. Some items were found more than 100 kilometers away. The search and rescue lasted hours. Rescuers found the bodies of the victims in terrible condition. The wreckage of the plane and items including luggage and tableware, the only ones that they didn't find were survivors. Although the rescue team didn't give up, they quietly accepted the sad fact that there might be no survivors. Along with the rescue work, there was an investigation into the air crash. Aviation Safety Council was in charge of the investigation and appointed Ron Kai as head of the team. The Boeing 747 was built in the United States, so Ron Kai contacted the National Transportation Safety Board to assist in the investigation. However, seeking the cause of the incident is not easy mainly because the plane crashed over the sea. With all the wreckage falling into the sea, without the wreckage, it would be difficult for them to analyze the cause of the crash in physical terms. The experienced Ron Kai believes that under these circumstances, the ground radar system may bring a lot of information. By investigating the ground radar, Ron Kai found that when Flight 611 climbed to an altitude of 35,000 feet, an entire spot belonging to the plane signal suddenly turned into three or four pieces and quickly dispersed. All of this indicated that this airplane suddenly broke apart in midair. After getting the result, a lot of speculation about the incident occurred among the public and investigation team. None of the wreckage that has been recovered showed signs of being shot down. It was also impossible for a midair collision for ground-based radar did not show any other signals that had approached Flight 611 before the incident. However, there were very few reasons that could account for the mid-air disintegration. What on earth was the reason for this tragedy? No external cause of the incident could be found, so there may be a design flaw in the aircraft. Therefore, Taiwan authorities ordered the grounding of all Boeing 747-00 aircraft until the truth was found out. Ron Kai also led the investigation team to review similar crash cases in the past and search for possible design flaws in the aircraft. They found that Boeing 747-00 aircraft did have a design flaw in a line adjacent to a fuel tank that could ignite the fuel inside the tank, but the inference was soon ruled out by the evidence. 25 days after the crash of Flight CI-611 rescue teams recovered the planes to black boxes, one of which recorded cockpit conversations. Ron Kai wanted to determine whether an abnormal situation occurred before the crash. The answer was no, except for the pilot's dialogue and the broadcast sound in the cabin. The voice in the recording was so calm that there was no abnormal sound. It wasn't until the last two seconds of the recording that the sound of the plane breaking up appeared. After half a second, the recording stopped abruptly. If the fuel was ignited, it was impossible that the pilot's conversation could remain normal until the last minute, which made Ron Kai extremely confused. What could cause a plane to break up suddenly without warning? Luckily, the successively recovered wreckage did bring hope. Although all the assumptions had been proved wrong, when investigators examined a large piece of debris on the tail of the plane, they found an area covered in alumina that looked like rust. Because this area was exposed to oxygen, all year round the color of the metal was changed. Judging from the color of the metal, Ron Kai thought the crack had existed for a long time. This was a piece of repaired doubler. When investigators removed the doubler, 
they finally found the real cause of the plane crash. It was a piece of poorly maintained skin on the tail. 22 years ago, the tail of CI-611 collided with the runway during a landing six months after leaving the factory. According to the records, China Airlines temporarily repaired the plane by covering the damaged area with a sheet of aluminum. According to regulations, a permanent maintenance was required within four months. Maintenance records for that year showed the maintenance had been carried out under the recommendations of the Boeing Co. That was obviously a lie. According to maintenance manual, if scratches on an aircraft are too deep, to be repaired, the entire damaged area should be replaced. However, until 22 years later, this part of the damaged area hadn't been replaced and the scratches on the tail were still there. China Airlines engineers said that the scratched area was too large to be removed. So they adopted another solution, smooth the scratches, and then design a repair doubler. The maintenance manual stated that the doubler must be 30% larger than the original structure. However, the doubler used by them was of the same size of the original damaged area covering all the scratch metal. Then they pretended to be serious about the records. For 22 years, anyone who had read the repair records thought the damaged part had been repaired according to regulations. The doubler covered all damage to the skin, which made it hard to see the damage from the outside. Every flight of the aircraft would cause the crack to expand. Due to the increase in the internal pressure, maybe only a few inches, millimeters, or even microns. In the end, the crack had expanded to 2.3 meters, and the skin fell off due to metal fatigue, L, eating to the breakup of the airplane. The most distressing thing was that the tragedy could have been avoided, because a dark brown stain on the exterior of the plane was found. The airlines didn't ban smoking in the early days. It was not until 1995 that it officially banned smoking on planes. Before 1995, the nicotine existing in the air seat through cracks in the skin creating an obvious stain. Any experienced maintenance engineer should notice something unusual when seeing those stains. However, no one pointed it out if someone had brought this up and fixed it the 225 people on board would still be alive. The chief engineer at that time was called Sun Jichang. Staying in America, he couldn't be brought to justice. The police didn't arrest him until 2006. However, due to his good conduct and advanced age, he was sentenced to two years in prison and five years probation. Until then, this CI-611 incident had come to an end. I know that you are still wondering. Now that we have found the truth of the incident, how about the strange recording that Mr. Jang received? Was that recording really a voice message from the victims of the plane crash? What was hidden behind the voice of the crying and the sound of the waves? In the next episode of Forbidden Files, I will uncover mystery of this spooky recording with you.